Noon starts right now. And right now on your news at noon, a woman put in jail for allegedly stabbing a man just north of downtown. What police say led up to the incident. Plus new video of a shooting that left three Houston officers wounded yesterday. Details on how the chaos unfolded and what investigators believe the suspect did to the gun. We've got a busy 7 8 forecast, which includes some rain chances and a strong cold front next week. We've got the latest coming up. But first, New Braunfels police say speed likely played a factor in a deadly single car crash along Interstate 35. The driver now identified as 31 year old Jarlin Giacona of Austin, crashing his 2004 Honda Civic just before 10 o'clock on North Business I-35. Police say the driver failed to make a curve from the southbound I-35 frontage road and then drove into the grassy median, rolled his vehicle over several times before being thrown out of the vehicle. He was pronounced dead at the scene. No other vehicles were involved and no one else was injured. From using words to wielding a weapon is how things went between one couple, according to San Antonio police. They say one of those people, the woman, stabbed a man in the middle of an argument. It happened at an apartment north of downtown on Victor Street, not far from the San Antonio Botanical Garden. As Katrina Weber reports, police say there is still a lot they need to learn about this case. One question that police are still trying to figure out is what happened between this couple that turned their disagreement into a criminal case. No matter how it started, it ended with the man needing medical care and the woman in handcuffs. San Antonio police officers arriving shortly before 10 last night found both of them at a ground floor apartment in the 200 block of Victor Street. Officers believe the couple had been arguing, and at some point they say the 40-year-old woman went from words to a weapon. They say she stabbed the 35-year-old man, cutting him several times. He was taken to a hospital. Police took the woman to jail, but they say they're still investigating. So far, they have not announced whether she's facing any charges. The last word we had from police about the man was that he was stable and had not suffered any life-threatening injuries. Reporting from north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we now know the name of a woman found dead in a driveway just northeast of downtown. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office identifying her as 42-year-old Victoria Stampley. According to police, Stampley was found dead with a gunshot wound last Saturday in front of a home on Post Avenue that's near Broadway. Neighbors tell police they heard gunshots just hours before the woman was found that morning. Police are still looking for the shooter. Police in Beaumont issuing a silver alert for a missing 69 year old Clyde Freeman last seen on Wednesday morning in Beaumont around 11 a.m. He was wearing a gray sweatshirt, black t-shirt, jeans and black shoes. He's five foot 10 inches tall and has gray hair and brown eyes. If you think you've seen him, you're being asked to call Beaumont police. The phone number is on your screen. It's 409-832-1234. And now to that shootout with police in Houston. The suspect crashes while being chased and opens fire and wounds three officers. He runs off and carjacks Mercedes at gunpoint and flees that scene, then barricades himself in a home for hours. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest as the nation faces a rash of gun violence against police officers. New video shows the moments a gunman opened fire in Houston Thursday shooting three police officers before carjacking a Mercedes at gunpoint. Mercedes, he just carjacked a white Mercedes. Authorities say the chaos began when those officers responded to a disturbance call, the suspect spotting them, then speeding away in a dark gray sports car. You see him crash, then open fire in surveillance video obtained by ABC station KTRK. There's an officer down. There's an officer down out there. The suspect then taking off in that stolen Mercedes, barricading himself in a home for hours, allegedly firing again at police before eventually surrendering. Walked out of the house with his hand up. Um, he had an apparent gunshot wound to the neck. He's been transported uh, to the hospital. Police say the pistol used may have been modified to fire like a machine gun. The Houston area was already mourning Corporal Charles Galloway, who was fatally shot last weekend by a different suspect. I'm damn tired of it. And we need to stand up as a community and do whatever we got to do. In Milwaukee Thursday night, police say a man shot an officer, then stole his patrol car before crashing. He and the three Houston officers are all expected to be okay.
And here in New York, the city is warning two NYPD officers who were shot and killed in the line of duty last week. Jason Rivera is being laid to rest today. His partner, Wilbert Morris Funeral, is scheduled for next week. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Also making headlines, a petition addressing Governor Greg Abbott asking him to release a teenaged trio. They're accused of murdering 42-year-old Gabriel Quintanilla. The petition on change.com, or rather change.org, has almost 242,000 signatures. It's getting a lot of attention because the brothers, Alejandro Trevino and Christian Trevino, along with family friend Juan Eduardo Melendez, are accused of killing Quintanilla after he allegedly touched his daughter inappropriately. Quintanilla is Alessandro and Christian's f stepfather. They're both half-siblings of the nine-year-old who was allegedly abused. The petition to release them is close to becoming one of the most signed petitions on that website. When it comes to the pandemic, the U.S. is now reporting an average of 627,000 new COVID-19 cases per day. That is an 18% drop over the last two weeks. Most states are seeing cases decrease or plateau. According to federal data, just 10 states are seeing at least a 10% increase in cases, and Texas is not one of them. Even as the Omicron COVID-19 variant continues to sweep the globe, scientists and health experts continue to monitor the new mutation of Omicron doesn't appear to be substantially different with regard to transmissibility. But if you look at severity of cases and you look at the data from Denmark, it doesn't appear that the cases that are with the new variant, the sublineage of Omicron, are any more severe. The World Health Organization maintains that BA.2 is not a variant of concern. However, it may be more contagious than the initial version of Omicron. If you still need to get your COVID vaccine, booster shot, or uh, even just a flu shot, Metro Health is holding a pop-up clinic today. It's going to be at the Frank Garrett Multi-Service Center on Northwest 18th Street until 2 o'clock today. So you still have a bit of time. All three vaccines are available for eligible children and adults. Kids 5 years old or older can receive the Pfizer vaccine, and children 12 years and older can receive the Pfizer booster shot. And the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines, you need to be 18 or older. And if today doesn't work for you, no worries. There are plenty of other opportunities to get vaccinated or tested. All you have to do is scan the QR code that's on your screen with your phone's camera. It will take you directly to our website, which has a list of all the area testing and vaccine sites, so you can find the nearest one near you. Also happening today, there's a blood drive to help ease the blood shortage that our area is right now facing. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center teaming up with District 2 Councilman Jeline McKee Rodriguez at the Claude W. Black Community Center from 2 p.m. until 2 p.m. Blood transfusions are essential for surgical operations, treatment for cancer, chronic illness, traumatic injuries, and more. With a supply in shortage, that means that not everyone who needs a blood transfusion can get one. If you're interested in donating, you can head over to the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center's website and register. And a quick reminder for you, if you plan to vote in the March primaries, you only have a few more days to make sure you're registered. The deadline is Monday, January 31st. Early voting begins next month on February 14th, and Election Day is March 1st. Right now on KSED.com, you can find all your election information, including what's on the ballot for the primary election. Meantime, the Bear County Tax Assessor's Office also reminding property owners that Monday is your last day to pay your 2021 property tax bill without interest or penalty. Penalty and interest on delinquent bills begin at 7%. The tax office will have extended business hours on Monday at all of its locations, including curbside drop-offs and a drive through option. You can also make payments online at bear.org slash tax or by going to the number on your screen. This deadline does not apply to taxpayers who are on a payment plan. And it's important to note that accounts with an active lawsuit from a prior year will be assessed an additional 15% attorney collection fee on the 2021 taxes if not paid by Monday. For more information, you can call the tax office at 210-335-2251.
Still ahead on your news at noon, a San Antonio tradition honoring first responders. We're taking a look at the 44th annual Cowboy Breakfast. And tonight we will get to see another fan favorite back in town. It is the return of DeMar DeRozan to San Antonio. Larry Mears with more on that coming up in sports. And yes, you can wear your N95 mask more than once. After the break, how health, health experts say you can do it safely. Earlier this month, U.S. health officials said Americans should wear N95 or KN95 masks, like the ones that are used by healthcare workers to slow the spread of the coronavirus, instead of what most of us have been using, cloth masks. But it's not always easy to find N95 masks, and they can be expensive. Although they are made for just a one-time use, health experts say you can actually reuse them if you take some precautions. If you plan to reuse your mask, you need to have at least five and rotate them daily. After you wear one of the masks, you can store it in a breathable paper bag like a lunch sack for a minimum of five days before wearing it again. Putting it in a bag for five days will give some time for the pathogens to die off. You can also clean your KN95 mask right now on KZ.com. We have an article that tells you exactly how to do that as well as information about cloth masks and disposable surgical masks. Yeah, I've been reading some interesting things about Instapots. Instapots? Instapots and oh. air fryers. Anyway, <laughs> there's a way to do it. Look it up on KSAT.com. Look at that. Is that like sunlight, sunshine? Wait, wait, you put the mask in the Instapot? Somebody, yes, there's a thing on, online. I don't know. We, maybe we need a truth index on it, but I think it, I think if you go to KSAT.com, it'll explain how to clean your mask. Interesting. Good stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the aquifer down two tenths of a foot to 662.1. It's still falling. We got a little bit of rain this morning, but not enough. The winds kicked up, though, and guess what came back? Mountain cedar. It's at 560. It's in the high category, unfortunately. Molds are low at 120. We have another chance of rain after a beautiful weekend, plus some cold air next week. We'll take a look. Coming up. I think it's going to be not as emotional as my Toronto first return was. This one would be more exciting in a sense of, you know, I'm just happy to get back and see the fans, um, see Pop, see the players, and, you know, kind of just go out there and compete. Former Spur DeMar DeRozan is ready to see Pop and his old crew tonight on game day. The Spurs will try to get back in the win column tonight when they host the Chicago Bulls. The Spurs lost 118 to 110 to Memphis Wednesday night, dropping their record to 18 and 31. For Spurs center Jakob Pertl, this game will be a little weird going against DeMar DeRozan for the first time in his NBA career. Jakob, who's averaging 13 points and nine rebounds per game this season, both career highs, has only known what it's like to play alongside DeMar as his teammate in Toronto and then San Antonio for the first five seasons of Pertl's career before DeMar left this summer for the Bulls. Demar's a, a great guy, a great leader. Um, like I said, I've, I've played with Demar my whole career, so um, it's going to be fun playing against him for the first time. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, going to be good to see him. DeMar comes to town as an NBA All-Star. Last night he was named as an Eastern Conference starter for the 2022 NBA All-Star game, and he certainly deserves it. DeMar leads the Bulls in scoring this season at 26 points per game and an assist at 4.8. He got the most votes at guard, and he was number one across the board from fans, media, and players. The five-time NBA All-Star who spent three seasons with the Spurs is looking forward to seeing Pop and his former teammates tonight. It's um, it's crazy, you know, um, just to see, you know, all those guys, a lot of those guys I haven't seen since I left San Antonio. I uh, still speak to uh, a majority of them, um, but just to be here, um, just to be back on the visitor side of the um, AT&T Center, uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Here's the Bulls Spurs matchup tonight, 730 at the AT&T Center. The Spurs today recalled Joshua Primo from the G League Austin Spurs. In just over a week, Mario Barrios will face Keith Thurman in his welterweight debut. Barrios has been working out in Las Vegas to prepare for his February 5th bout. So what's it like headlining a pay-per-view fight in Las Vegas? I had my first fight, you know, at the MGM when I was um, back in 2015. 
And um, I, I remember, you know, walking out for the, for that fight and, you know, just thinking like, man, like, you know, I hope one day, you know, um, you know, my, I could be headlining, you know, here in Vegas. And, um, you know, and that, that time is now. And um, it's, you know, it, it's a very proud feeling, man, for myself, you know, just knowing all the work that I put in you know, throughout the years, you know, just knowing that everything is, is unfolding, you know, how we, we had always wished it would. You can hear more from Barrios right now on the instant replay page of KSAT.com. Ursula, David. Thank you, Larry. We want to head out to a traffic problem. Uh, this is something you might want to know about if you're heading out on I-10. Yeah, this is at I-10 and Ralph Fair Road. You can see that uh, black SUV right there. Looks like it's uh, either spun out or somehow it ended up going the wrong way in the, the, the wrong direction. And um, you can see the traffic is barely being able to move around that. Well, there was another camera angle a second ago, right at 1604, you see traffic is backed way back down into past 1604, back down into town, so. Yep, so you might want to avoid. This is outbound I-10? Not real sure. Which Not real sure, is. okay, we'll, we'll find out and uh, we'll be right back after the break. Millions of Americans on alert for that powerful nor'easter expected to bring heavy snow, damaging winds, and coastal flooding. They're calling him it Keenan. Hmm. 17 states from the Carolinas to Maine bracing for this winter blast. ABC's Rob Marciano shares the latest from Boston. We are less than 24 hours away now from the snow to start to fly and the winds cranking up. Blizzard warnings now posted for the entire coastline of the Northeast. Here in the Boston area, likely to see two feet, maybe more of snow, which means by this time tomorrow, these now resting plows will be very, very busy. The city of Boston has over 700 plows, trucks and sanders to try to clear over 2,000 miles of lane roadways. And some of those roads are pretty tight, so it's a big job. Uh, we've got over 10,000 tons of salt allotment here at this depot alone but I don't think salt's going to matter much, at least until the snow stops, because we're going to see rates three, four inches per hour. The snow's going to be blown around. It's going to be tough to keep these roads clear. Good news is it's going to be on a Saturday, so most people hopefully will stay home. But with that wind, I mean, some of those homes are going to be buried in snow, four, five, six, seven, eight feet drifts likely to be the case. It's been over, been about four years now, 2018, since Boston has seen a full-on blizzard, and this one looks to mean business. Rob Marciano, ABC News, Boston, Massachusetts. A potential gas leak and bridge collapse has public safety officials in Pittsburgh on high alert. The bridge that collapsed was covered with snow. Following that collapse, a strong smell of natural gas could be detected. Authorities are advising people to avoid the area. No injuries have been reported, at least no major injuries. It comes as President Joe Biden is headed to Pittsburgh this afternoon to give a speech that includes infrastructure as one of his topics. Prosecutors in Louisville selecting jurors for a criminal case against one of the officers involved in that deadly raid that left Breonna Taylor dead. Hundreds reported for jury duty at a Louisville courthouse this morning. Officer Brett Hankison is not charged in Taylor's shooting death. Instead, he's standing trial on three lower level felony charges for allegedly firing his service weapon wildly into her neighbor's apartments. Still, some say Hickinson's trial might offer a small sliver of justice for Taylor. NATO ministers of defense planning now to meet to address tensions between Ukraine and Russia. They will meet at Military Alliance's headquarters in Brussels on February 16th and 17th. The NATO Secretary General will head up the meeting. Tensions have been soaring in recent weeks as the United States and its NATO partners express growing concern over the buildup about 100,000 Russian troops. They are amassing near Ukraine, although Russia denies it intends to invade that country. And thousands of people dealing with canceled flights ahead of that major storm Justin's been talking about going to the Northeast. Travelers are getting used to these cancellations after bad weather and staffing shortages due to COVID-19. Meanwhile, United Airlines is trying to solve a pilot shortage problem. In Arizona, United is already growing pilots. This all thanks to United's new Aviate Camp Academy. It's the only flight school owned by a major U.S. airline, and it is the newest fix for an industry-wide problem. Instructors say there has never been a better time to learn to fly. Looking outside with live cam, pretty, pretty. Doesn't even look like it belongs in this year. 
We have so we have had so few of these days. <laughs> it does feel like it's been a while since we've had a full on sunny day. Not only are we going to get the sun this afternoon, we'll get it on Saturday and Sunday too. The weekend looks amazing and temperatures are a little chilly today. We've got some gusty winds. They'll warm up some over the weekend too. Let's first start with satellite and radar showers that we had this morning pushing south. Still seeing some of that activity down there around Corpus Christi, but not in our area. And in fact, most places starting to see uh, mostly sunny skies, uh, even down to the south of San Antonio. 50 in Kerrville, 54 New Braunfels, 55 Gonzales, 55 Pleasanton, 50 in Carrizo Springs. We'll see those temperatures make it into the upper 50s later today. And if you missed the pollen count earlier, it wasn't great news. Mountain Cedar jumped up today, presumably because of those gusty north winds, jumped up to 560. It's back in the high category. We'll see where we end up tomorrow. Hopefully that number comes down some. Forecast for today, 58 degrees, your high temperature, clear skies. Winds calm tonight. That'll lead to a light freeze here in San Antonio. And as we look at the temperatures over the next seven days, well, we do climb into the 70s by next week, but then the bottom falls out by Thursday of next week, thanks to a strong cold front. We'll talk more about that and have a full look at your seven day forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. In your health headlines, a New York couple facing charges after allegedly using fake COVID-19 vaccine cards to get into a football game. During the third quarter of the Buffalo Bills game back on the 15th, authorities questioned Amber and Michael Nabb about their vaccine cards and an investigation ensued. Well, 10 days later, they were arrested. Authorities say the couple previously posted on social media about doing the same thing at other games. Both pled not guilty to charges of uh, felony charges of criminal possession of a forged instrument. They are due back in court next month. A new study shows vitamin D could help reduce the risk of autoimmune disorders. Those are conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and thyroid diseases. A professor at Harvard Medical School looked at people 50 and older who've been taking 2,000 IU of D3 for more than five years. They had a 22% lower chance of developing an autoimmune disorder. The study also finds fish oil might help prevent such conditions. The amount of vitamin D used in the study is over the recommended limit. Taking too much could cause other health problems. We need our muscles for strength and endurance. So what do you do to have good muscle mass, but also prevent muscle loss? With more on that, here's ABC's Aika Jachi. If you're having trouble with simple tasks like buttoning your shirt, opening a jar, tying your shoelace, raising your arms, reaching for objects, walking straight, or having cramps in your arms and legs, you may have lost muscle mass. Injuries, lack of movement, illness, poor nutrition, and old age can often hurt your muscles by causing loss of mass, making you weak and frail. The older you are, the longer your muscles take to recover. But there are ways to prevent muscle loss. Studies show that if you're inactive for even just two weeks, you could lose up to a quarter of your muscle mass gained from exercise. Regular exercise and movement is the key to strong muscles. Strength and power training are the best types of exercise to bulk your muscles. Talk to your personal trainer or physical therapist to find an exercise routine that works best for you. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ike Giacci. Still ahead, the bridal industry is booming, but that means demand for dresses are booming too. How supply chain issues are now affecting these poor brides orders. Plus helping people understand their internet service a little bit better. The new nutrition labels the SEC is looking to make mandatory for companies. And we're taking a look at the latest unemployment claims in the U.S. as the pandemic continues to take hold of our economy. That and more next on the News at Noon. The number of Americans filing unemployment claims for the first time seems to be dropping. According to the Labor Department, 260,000 people filed a new claim for benefits. That number is down by 30,000 claims filed the week before. And the agency says the number of people still receiving unemployment helped drop its lowest level since 1973. Now that those big in-person weddings are happening again, brides are being told Order those wedding dresses early. The bridal industry is booming right now. It's depleting the dress inventory as supply chain issues continue to cause shipping delays and order backlogs. According to the National Bridal Retailers Association, those delays could continue well into 2022. 
pre-pandemic, it would take five to seven months for a bride to get her dress. Now, there can be a 300% increase in shipping times. Bridal retailers say they're taking extra steps to make sure that brides get their dresses in on time and even early. But they're advising all newly engaged couples, brides-to-be, choose and order your dress as soon as possible. The FCC looking to make the so-called broadband nutrition label mandatory for Internet providers. The labels would help consumers build, better understand the Internet service they buy and avoid unexpected costs and fees. In 2016, the government launched a voluntary labeling program where Internet providers could lay out information on prices, speeds, and data caps to consumers. Now the FCC is proposing to make labeling mandatory for all wired Internet providers and mobile carriers. Before that can happen, though, the FCC has to first get public feedback on the proposal. Look it outside with live cam. Enjoy it, y'all. It's going to be a pretty weekend. It is. This is uh, sort of the start to things, right? The clouds have cleared out. We've got the blue skies. Temperatures warming up into the 50s today. So far, we're up to 52 for a high. Morning low was 43. It'll be a lot colder tomorrow morning. Freeze here in San Antonio, likely. Averages are 65 and 42. Records are 81 and 20. 20 was set back in 1976. We don't have any extremes in our forecast as far as those temperatures go, but we will see some colder weather as we get into next week. Another look at that seven day forecast is coming up. Welcome back. As we look across the state, uh, we've got clearing skies for most of the Lone Star State, except for deep south Texas, where there's still a little bit of rain holding on. That's the same rain that moved through our area a little bit earlier today. Drier air also starting to funnel in here. Temperature wise, 53 Waco, 51 Dallas, 43 in Lubbock. Nothing terribly cold. This frontal boundary that moved through is just basically pushing in some drier air and that's going to make for some chilly temperatures uh, tomorrow morning as well. Here's a look at the dew points, mostly in the 20s out there. Uh, so the air is, yes, very dry and that's the, the kind of air mass that is working into our neck of the woods for the weekend and going to make for some nice weather. You see the scene right now, blue skies, 52 degrees at the airport, 58 stints and 54 Kelly, 53 at Randolph. Still looking at some gusty north winds though, gusting up to 25 miles per hour in some cases. Clouds have cleared and uh, 52 airport, 55 Pleasanton, 53 Kennedy, still 50 down in Corpus Christi with a few showers there, but uh, most of our viewing area is now under sunny skies and we'll see clear skies through probably Sunday. Wind speed forecast, yes, we'll still see some winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour gusting to 25, but those winds really do calm tonight. We've got the perfect combination for some radiational cooling, clear skies, dry air, and uh, you'll see these temperatures really fall off tonight. 56 2 p.m., 58 by 4 p.m., 53 by 6 p.m., and then uh, down to 47 by 8 p.m. So once the sun goes down, these temperatures will fall very quickly. If you have plans to be out and about tonight, you will want your coat because it will get pretty chilly. And by tomorrow morning, we'll be in the 30s here in San Antonio. Everybody will see 30s and 20s and a possible freeze here in town. 26 in Kerrville by tomorrow morning, 29 Uvalde, 31 Carrizo Springs. So a lot of places will be at or below freezing to start Saturday, but with full sun and clear skies, we'll see a very nice afternoon. Here is the bigger picture, and the rain that we saw a little bit earlier is connected to a bigger system, which is really starting to get wound up here. There's snow flying in parts of West Virginia, even a few snowflakes up across the Northeast. Our nor'easter is starting to build out here over the Atlantic and it's going to work its way north and then uh, that's when we get the really heavy snow. This is going to be the big weather maker over the weekend. You're going to hear a lot about this, but up to two feet of snow possible. There's some models now putting out even more snow than that. Wind gusts 60 to 70 miles per hour, so this is a full on blizzard. It's going to shut down the northeast at least for tomorrow. So just a heads up there for us. We got great weather over the weekend, yes, but another storm system pulls in here by Monday and this brings showers and a few storms Monday morning. Mainly, I think uh, probably pre dawn through about lunchtime on Monday. We'll see a chance for rain and then that storm system quickly pushes east and then down the line. We're going to be looking for some cold air coming in here. Looks like that cold front scheduled for Thursday morning. So by Thursday afternoon, that cold air will be pushing into Texas. Now this isn't going to be like February of last year. We have to reiterate that it will get cold and we could see a little bit of rain with this, but it's not going to be.
bitter, bitter cold. 64 degrees Saturday, 68 Sunday. Chance of storms Monday morning, 70s Tuesday and Wednesday, but the bottom falls out there on Thursday. Windy and temperatures in the 40s, guys. Burr. Thank you. Chilly. You know, the fans miss him. You know, a lot of his teammates miss him. You got to wonder how much Pop misses him because of just that leadership that DeMar brought to him. And the I court. think that's exactly why Pop would miss him, at least on the court. Off the court, you know, Pop loves all his players off the court. And I know he liked DeMar a lot, just away from basketball. Coming up, DeMar just tells us how much he appreciates Coach Pop and what he means for his career. Plus, in high school basketball, the Clark Cougars have a key, I mean, key district game tonight coming up.